And once again, I'd like to welcome everyone that's on this webinar to the LA Burgers webinar for tonight. Tonight, we are really pleased with uh, part two of Jaegers. Uh, but before we get there, I want to thank everyone who is a member for helping to support Los Angeles Burgers. Your support helps with these webinars, helps with local fetal ornithology and community science projects. We have to pay the bills. We have to pay for our web space and for our mailbox. And so uh, we appreciate your support. We have no paid um, employees. Everything is on a volunteer basis with Los Angeles Burgers. And we do it because we love to do it. Honest. Uh, next slide. And with that, I would like to introduce Andy Birch, and he's a la is excuse me, excuse me a board member of Los Angeles Burgers, and have him ask him to introduce our speaker for tonight. Andy, thank you, Ron. I'm pleased to welcome back Julian Hoff for part two of his Jaeger Masterclass. He's a, a lifelong birder, originally from the UK. Julian moved to Cape May in his early twenties, where he conducted neotropical migration counts for Cape May Bird Observatory. His background is in graphic design, but Julian is also a prolific artist. Um, his work has appeared in numerous publications, both in North America and Europe. Uh, Julian has also done some moonlighting as a professional bird guide for Sunrise Birding, which is taking him all over the world birding. Um, after four decades of globetrotting adventures involving too many planes, trains, and automobiles, Julian <clears throat> lives in New Haven with his son, Alex. And over to you, Julian. Great. So I think somebody has to stop sharing their screen, right? No, you're all set. You can go ahead and share right now. Okay, there we go. Okay. You look it's looking good. Okay. Just... Oops. Just uh, have to tweak something on my end here. Okay. Okay. So thanks everybody again for joining for part two. I know part one. And Julian, we're seeing, uh, not, I don't think this is the first slide in your deck. I think you it need is. to go back a couple. Uh, this one's the first one. No, I think, I think that's, that's correct. Have you seen a Pomeranian Jaeger? Correct. Yes, we are. Okay, yep, yeah, that's the first one. All right. So, yeah, so thank you for joining for part two. In part one, if you were here last week, uh, we covered young Jaegers, which are a little bit tricky to identify. And this week, I just wanted to follow up and kind of close the loop by talking about adults, which uh, do occur in the summer and uh, early fall pelagics that most people go on, especially on the West Coast. Much of the um, distribution and, and timing of migration is similar in the East Coast and West Coast. So this applies to kind of both coasts, really. So what we'll do is um, we'll just go through um, part two. And for those tuning in on YouTube, as I mentioned last week, we will have a couple of interactive quizzes as part of this. And because you won't be able to see the polls, it might be a good idea if you want to follow along, just have a pen and piece of paper just to jot your answers down so that when they go through the poll answers, if you're interested, you can keep track. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over a couple of things that we covered last week as it applies to adults. And one of the things is unlike juveniles, adults are pretty much easier to identify um, sometimes. Again, with all, all species, um, depending on how well you see a Jaeger, it can e make the problems hard or it can make them a little bit easier. But usually if you have seen Jaegers from land, as we said last week, a lot of the plumage features, um, you're not really gonna be able to see. Uh, the, the distance just prohibits you from seeing things like central tail projection shape and uh, you know, underwing markings. So again, 
the problems with juveniles that we talked about last week still hold true for adults that, you know, when you're looking at them off the West Coast from land, you may not be seeing them close. And most of the time, if you do see an adult Jaeger at a distance, it can be pretty similar. Uh, if you do see them up close, uh, it's a lot easier to see some of the features that, that separate them. And we're going to be talking a little bit more about those. So just to go over and remind ourselves a couple of variable characteristics we talked about last week, growing up in the UK, um, a lot of seabirds were seen from promontories and peninsulas, um, pelagic species were typically seen from land. Uh, there wasn't many organized pelagic trips growing up. So the myths that we got eschewed upon us by um, veterans of sea watching were, you know, if you see a palm, it's always going to be this big bulky bird. Um, long tails on the extreme end are generally slim and turn like. And a few, a few other things that if you do see them well, you should be looking for. And as we talked about, while those are all true, they are also false in a way, because as we talked about, um, the size differences between the sexes, between males and females, can vary, uh, according to Olson and Larson in their book, between 11 and 17%. So if you've seen a big parasitic and a small pomerine, then the myth that palms are always barrel-chested and bulky may not hold true. So like we did last week, what we're going to do is we're going to start off with um, a couple of quiz birds just to kind of get a benchmark for everybody to kind of get a feel for where they think they are in their identification of adults. And I would just remind you as you look at these, if you tuned in last week and you remember anything from my ramblings, um, some of these do hold true, especially as it relates to head and bill shape, uh, size of the underwing flash, and a few other features. So. Uh, while the plumage may differ, some of the structural features that are quite variable do hold true between these species. So as you look at this, uh, just try and remember to, to factor in size and shape as well as plumage features that you can see. Okay, here you go. So uh, go ahead and answer away. In fact, uh, people are answering away pretty quickly. That can be good or bad. <laughs> <laughs> it was but... good last week. We definitely saw uh, towards the end that, the, that people were getting a lot more confident in forming from one species over the other. So that was good. I think that confidence kind of spilled over a little bit to today. So let's give everyone another five seconds, four, three, get your last answer in, two and one. And here are the results. So I'll read out um, what people went for so people uh, on YouTube can kind of see where the audience pulled. So. 25% went for Pomerine, 15% went for Long-Tailed, and an overwhelming majority, 60%, went for Parasitic. And I particularly chose this bird because it didn't really have any central tail feathers. <laughs> so I, I, I didn't mean to make it hard, but it, it was a little bit tricky. But it is indeed a Parasitic Jaeger. So most people got that right. So that's excellent. A um, couple of things to key into here, um, even without the pointed central tail feathers, uh, characteristic of a parasitic, you see it's got a decent underwing flash here. Um, the bill is kind of medium. We talked last week about parasitics having a spiky bill um, and a kind of a, a, a smaller triangular shaped head, which this bird has. It's got kind of a small sloping forehead. And one of the things we talked about in the last quiz bird last week is this little white blaze here. That's a really good field mark. Uh, a lot of adult type Jaegers um, 
don't have an obvious white blaze above the bill. So if, you, if you're looking for this and you do see a little white spot there, good chance that that's a parasitic Jaeger. Okay, should I put up? Oh, there we go. Okay. Let me put a poll two. There we go. And here's the question for poll two. And again, we got a huge onslaught of answers. People are pretty sure about this. And as I said last week, if, if everybody gets this right, I'll, I'll just go home. <laughs> <laughs> well, that means that you've been doing good. Yeah, done my job. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You have to believe that I get them all right. <laughs> or eBird, if you trust eBird. <laughs> okay, let's get our last few answers in in five, four, three, two, and one. And here you go, Julian. So, 13% um, went for Pomerine, 17% went for Parasitic, and 70% went for Long-Tailed. So this is not an easy one, and, and I can see why people would plumb for Long-Tailed on this, but it is uh, a Parasitic. And one of the things that we talked about last week is long-tailed having um, these two outer primaries here. Uh, but you can see a few shafts. The tail isn't as long as it should be on some long tails, although that is variable. But I think on this bird, um, one of the things to key into is, as we'll get into, the upper parts are pretty uniform. Uh, they don't show any real contrast between the trailing edge of the wing and the rest of the, the front part of the wing. But one of the other things to key into is, and we'll, we'll show this a little bit further on, is if you look at the head pattern and the shape of the hood here, it's got this quite nice dip below the eye, um, which typically long tails don't tend to show. And we'll show a few pictures later. This is not an easy one. This is a very long-tailed parasitic like. So if you did go for long tail, don't be kind of uh, disappointed. Uh, it is a bit of a tricky one, but that is a good kind of idea of, of, of where people are. We'll, we'll get into some of the issues with adults here and uh, hopefully learn a little bit more. So, like we did last week, we're going to follow the same kind of um, chronology to make it easy to kind of learn. So last week we talked about what key features should we be looking for in a Jaeger as opposed to, you know, concentrating on things that, that really don't help us make an identification. And knowing what to look for is, is key. So uh, we talked about the general impression, size and shape of Jaegers. Um, the bill and the hood shape in adults is, is key. Um, and we'll talk about that. The number of pale primary shafts, like in juveniles, is still valid uh, for some adults in some instances. And one thing with the adults versus the juveniles and first years is the central tail feather length and shape is often very prominent on adults, unless the broken off like we showed in quiz A, that makes it a little bit different. And it's good to know what else to look for in case those um, cheat sheet kind of central tail feathers are missing. As we said, um, when you see Jaegers out at sea, um, they're pretty um, clear cut, dark cap, often with, with the breast band, females tend to have uh, a more prominent breast band than males. Um, they tend to have this nice buffy suffusion to the neck and much more striking in plumage than, than juveniles. But if you are seeing an adult Jaeger, even though they're quite distinct and easy to pick out at a distance, separating the species 
at long range when you can't really see the tail feather shape very well can sometimes lead to a lot of confusion, especially when you consider that um, females are bigger than males. Just to remind everybody about flight style and behavior, uh, when you can't see plumage features, this is a good thing to kind of take into consideration as you're watching them. Um, behavior as it relates to their kleptoparasitism. We talked about the parasitics will be the one that's more falcon-like, that is quite persistent, harassing turns and other goals over long periods with really dramatic swoops and dives. Pomerings tend to be a little bit more uh, sprinter-like in that they'll harass birds for a short distance. And long tails are very, very uh, buoyant and turn-like. And it, it does hold true that depending on what the weather is and, and the wind, uh, again, that will affect flight style. But on, on calm days, if birds are harassing other turns around the boat, um, the flight style and behavior is going to be basically that. Parasitics, as we said, pretty agile and relentless. Long tails don't often engage in that behavior. Most of the long tails I see don't do a lot of um, relentless chasing of, of turns, although they will harass one. Uh, they do tend to, like juveniles that we talked about last week, engage in this dip feeding action like a black term where they'll swoop down and pick off um, food off the surface, which you probably won't see any of the other Jaegers doing. So next, when we talk about key features, we talked about head and bill pattern. Um, here's a couple of adults, and we'll talk about the various uh, morphs like we did with juveniles a little bit later and not to confuse it but typically speaking uh, adults occur in pale morphs and dark morphs with um, some intermediate morphs between dark and light occurring a, a lot of the time in parasitic less so in pomerine and with long-tailed uh, one of the the curious things although we looked last week at the juveniles that that do turn up in August, as they're going south in, in a dark morph and a pale morph with, with you know, a little bit of intermediates in between. In adult plumage, unlike parasitic and pomerine, long tails don't ever occur in a dark morph. And I say don't ever occur in a dark morph. There has been a couple of instances. I think there was a bird in Shetland and another bird in Norway that was described as possibly being a, a, a dark morph long-tailed. One of those did show some immature characteristics and one bird may have been a melanistic version. So basically right now, there's not many documented occurrences of a long-tailed actually having occurred as a dark morph, as far as I'm aware. So parasitic, um, slim bill. Again, you can see this little white blaze over the base of the bill here, which is lacking in the other two species. Um, the hood meets the gape. And what, what we're talking about here is the, the lower border of the hood meets the gape just at the bill there. And generally, this lower border is often diffuse and is not even which is one of the features that helped identify that previous bird as a parasitic. Pomerines, just like we talked about with the juveniles last week, very much more gull-like substantial bill, often bicolored, uh, being brown with a dark tip. And one of the good things to notice on pomerines is the hood, instead of meeting at the gape, extends underneath the bill a little bit. So it occupies this area here called the malar region. <clears throat> Often very buffy on the neck. Um, typically parasitics can show some buffiness, but strong buff tones to the neck is often really characteristic in, in Pomerines. It tends to show that quite a lot. On long-tailed, 
Again, like we talked about with the juveniles, uh, you can still see the bill structure here. Uh, the very short, thick bill of a long tail is prominent here. The cap is very black. It, it doesn't have these brown tones of a parasitic. Um, Pomerines tend to have a dark chocolate, but long tails often in the field look very blackish capped. And one of the things to look for is you can see the, the, the black doesn't really extend under the bill and doesn't extend in a triangular shape here. And one thing to notice is the lower border is quite straight on a long tail, which is easy to see in flight. And it's a good thing to, to note as it's compared to the other two. So head and bill pattern, you know, the size and shape of the bill and the size, shape and color of the hood are often really key features to look for on an adult Jaeger. One other thing I wanna talk about here, uh, and we'll use the long tail as an example. You can see how grayish these upper parts are on a long tailed. Parasitics tend to be like a, a brownish gray, and pomerines tend to be the darkest, almost like a dark chocolate brown. But generally speaking, this clean gray upper parts of a long tailed is pretty characteristic compared to the other two. Again, this is just to illustrate uh, the bill and head pattern of a bird uh, in, in flight. As you can see at a distance, um, you still tend to see this diffuse area around the bill here. The tail feathers are, are a medium, almost the, the length of the tail itself and pointed. And it has all these four or five primary shafts. Again, all features of parasitic. Central tail feather shape. We talked about this in juveniles and the central tail feather shape in adults is equally important. Um, what we've got here is um, we'll start on the, on, on the left. Um, obviously long tailed by its name. This bird has incredibly long tail stream. It's much longer than the tail. Um, Parasitic can have what appears to be long tail streamers, but they're generally the same length as, as, as the tail. And Pomerine is a much more distinct Jaeger, being very, very blunt ended with these twisted tail feathers, often referred to as spoons. One thing that we mentioned is um, a lot of birds can show a very distinct breast band. Um, they're often more obvious in females, where the males, which are on the bottom here, tend to have a broken breast band or none at all. Only long-tailed Jaeger in adult plumage does not have a breast band. So if you see a, an adult Jaeger that doesn't have a breast band, um, and it's very clean and doesn't show any, any partial breast band, that's a good sign that it's a long-tailed. But just take a minute to just kind of gauge the length of the tail feathers here between long-tailed and parasitic to kind of gain a, an impression of, of how long they can be. And this bird on top is, is incredibly long-tailed. I just put that in to give you an idea of how long they can get. One of the other things to embrace on this too is we talked about the upper part color and contrast. It's really good to check in long-tailed. We talked about this great upper part coloration. The, the key thing here is it contrasts with the trailing edge of the wing and the primary. So you get this kind of two-tone effect on a lot of long tails and basically no underwing flash. Again, we talked about those as being important in, in juveniles and they're also important in adults. Pomeries tend to be quite heavily barred along the flanks here, whereas parasitic and long tail tend to be clean flanked. And that holds true for, for males and females. Uh, there is a lot of variation, but often if you, you see a bird that's got a, a lot of uneven barring along the flanks here, uh, it's a good sign that it's probably a Pomerine. Again, you can see the difference in the, the, the cap. Um, quite diffuse and parasitic, extending underneath the bill in Pomerine. You know, even, even distantly, you can get the impression of, 
this dark hood extending below here. And again, we talked about that very nice, even lower border to the cap in long tailed. It's very evident here. One thing to know um, for European um, long tailed, the, the birds that you do see in Europe um, typically have um, a smoky belly and um, the, 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 the race, the subspecies that occurs in North America and, and Greenland tend to have a, a much paler, lower belly. It's not as prominent. Birds in Europe tend to have a very dark belly with a contrasting white chest, which is, which is a good feature at a distance if you're looking at birds in Europe. We talked about central tail feather shape being important. Um, these do snap off. Uh, they, they do become broken. Um, so what do you do when you find or see a bird where the tail feather shape uh, is, is not really helping you? Um, well, again, we start to concentrate on those other features we talked about. You know, the short, thick build, this very clean lower border here to the hood. This lower border here is quite extensive and seems to disappear under the bill. Um, no real underwing flash here. Very strong yellow cheeks on this bird. So that all helps us identify the bird on the left as a Pomerine. Again, that two-tone bill is another key feature. And even when broken, uh, these tail feathers often look quite broad and blunt ended. Blunt ended, I should say. Bird on the right, um, hoping most people got that as a long tailed, even without its long tail, by virtue of, again, you can see these two white primaries here, no underwing flash. And again, this nice clean border is probably the easiest thing to see on flying birds. So we'll just go through these species here in a bit more detail now that we've gone over a couple of the issues that, that may face us in the field. The white forehead blaze, um, obvious on this bird. This is a, a, a pale morph bird. It's got um, that nice kind of gray brown or chocolate brown plumage um, can vary. It's got a very diffuse breast band. In the flying bird here on the right, you can see again, uh, the central tail feathers being quite short compared to a long tail, roughly um, the size and length of the, 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 the tail. Often they can be slightly longer as we showed in that first quiz bird that was very long tail like. Again, bit of an underwing flash here, uh, a breast band, which uh, rules out long tailed. And the nice clean flanks, which would probably not be visible on a Pomerine. And even when broken, Pomerines would probably never ever show pointed tail feathers like this in adult plumage. So for Pomeranian Jaeger, uh, the bird on the, on the left is, again, very heavy build. Um, this characteristic pointed shape to the cap. You know, it's almost like a fishing hook. It just kind of a little spur that, that kicks back here and then joins underneath the bill. No white forehead blaze. See on the flying bird and on the standing bird here, these very dark model flanks, very, very strong breast band, um, probably indicative that this bird might be a female. Again, there is a lot of overlap, but typically according to the literature, it's the females that tend to have the, the thicker breast bands and more heavily barred flanks. Again, a very robust bird, 
Clearly in adult plumage, you can see the bicolored bill, just like we talked about with juveniles uh, at a distance, the thickness of the bill helps it uh, to not disappear against the background of, of the sea like it does in parasitic because it's a thinner bill. And again, easily able to see this cap shape. These rounded spoons here often look twisted. Um, they can vary in shape, but typically speaking, um, Pomeranian Jaegers in adult plumage that have full spoons, very, very characteristic. They look like a goose flying backwards, you know. So long-tailed Jaegers, they're probably my favorite, favorite Jaeger of, of, of them all. Um, often the, the rarest Jaeger in the East here. And, and I'm assuming, I know off the West Coast, out of some of the San Diego Pelagics, I, I, I think they had huge numbers um, last year in September, obviously mainly juveniles. But um, long-tailed Jaegers are always well-received uh, when we see them in the East. Um, we rarely see adults. Um, most of the birds we see in the east are um, migrating south in fall. Uh, we don't run many pelagics in the spring, but the ones that, that we have run in the past that I've been on that have gone out to the canyons in, in late May, early June, uh, we have had a couple of adult long-tailed Jaegers um, heading north along with Arctic terns. So adults, uh, again, the short, thick bill and the very well-defined black cap, um, even more well-defined uh, because it contrasts more with the gray upper parts. Um, very dapper looking bird, we can even perch, you can see how these tail streamers just kind of like bend and project well past the end of the wings. The cap joins slightly under the bill or at the gate, but not in this kind of spur shape that the Pomerines have. And again, it's such a short, old dark bill that uh, it's, it's pretty characteristic. Again, always likes a breastband in, in adult plumage. So not too difficult to identify an adult um, long-tailed Jaeger. On the right, um, this is, um, an example of what I talked about in the previous slide were um, the Asian or European race Longicordus um, has this more extensive gray belly that basically extends up to the lower breast. So you get this nice kind of white isolated spot, especially on distant birds that you're looking at from land. You just tend to see uh, a dark Jaeger with this kind of prominent white chest that contrasts with the rest of the belly. Um, that's not seen in other Jaegers, so it's very good on distant birds, especially in Europe. But North American birds belong to the race Pallisons, and they're typically paler, like the bird on the left here. You can see how the pale extends much, much further down into the central belly. So you don't get this kind of isolated upper white chest in a lot of the birds that would be seen here in North America. One other key thing to know, um, no primary flash. Occasionally you'll see the pale primary shafts of the upper wing uh, mirrored on the underwing. But generally speaking, um, if you've seen an adult Jaeger like this and it's got a big white primary flash, it's probably not a long tail. Again, longer wispy central tail feathers. Uh, this again is a good example of a long tail, but I often find judging tail feather shape and length to be difficult between some parasitics and some long tails. If I, if I only had to look at the back end of a bird here, um, this is a bird that's kind of, could be, a long-tailed parasitic or a short-tailed long-tailed. <laughs> That's not going to blow your brains up.
We talked about the different moths, um, long tail being the one that's unlikely to be seen in, in an adult dark moth plumage, whereas dark moth pomerines and dark moth parasitics uh, um, are much more likely to be seen. Um, they tend to be, according to the literature, they tend to be more prevalent in the southern part of the breeding ranges. And apparently dark pomerines outnumber pale birds by 99 to 1, according to Olsen and Larson. But again, um, one of the things, if you're looking to see a dark moth adult, is they are really, really beautiful and striking birds, especially a dark moth pom with these huge spoons, big hefty plumage, um, big hefty bird with like complete dark plumage. But again, the heavy bill, broad wings, you know, substantial body and blunt ended tails, uh, tail spoons, very, very characteristic. Um, you're not going to misidentify that, uh, even if you do see one at a distance. Uh, again, the dart morphs, the underwing flashes tend to be reduced. Um, obviously, this is a parasitic, but doesn't have um, any pale underwing flash. Um, but again, these tail feathers are kind of on the short end, equal amount in length to the tail there. Again, very slim bird, um, but very, very striking. So we get to that time of the talk. Where? We're going to do some quizzes. All right. So for those um, still tuned in on YouTube, um, hopefully they have your pencil and paper ready, and we'll give people a few minutes to go through this. Okay, here is bird one. And there you go. I'm still trying to figure out what a um, what a goose looks like when it flies backwards. It's like a bummer on Jaeger. <laughs> Maybe it looks like a goose flying forwards. <laughs> So this is the part where we hope everybody goes for one species and gets it right. Well, everyone didn't go for one species. Well, I tried to throw the tricky ones in at the front, make it hard, you know, make it easier. <laughs> and let's give everyone five. I'm not, I'm not doing this to torment people. <laughs> five, four, three, two, and one. And here you go. So nobody went for Pomerine Jaeger. Wow. Well, it, it isn't one, so that's good. 18% um, <laughs> went for Parasitic. And for those of you watching from home um, on YouTube, 82% went for Longtail. And it is... long tail there you go yeah. all right i don't think i put a second slide in like i did last week so yeah so i'll go through um this at which i'm hoping everybody keyed into um hopefully everybody keyed into the contrast in the upper wing here this nice gray brown with a slightly darker leading edge to the primaries and secondaries obviously two primary shafts I picked this because the tail feather shape is, is pretty ambiguous in this as it relates to uh, long-tailed and parasitic. It, 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 it's not helpful at all in the identification. So I'm hoping people clued into this very nice, clean cut, straight lower border to the cap, short, dark bill, not much of an underwing uh, flash there. So um, that's great. Everybody did well there. Cool. Number two. Okay, here we go. May have been a bit mean in this one. 
got one with no tail feathers. Yeah, with no tail. <laughs> I'd say it was going to be easy. I'm trying to remember what this one is now. <laughs> uh oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Well, uh, we're still getting lots of answers coming in. And they stop. Let's give them five, <clears throat> four, three, two, and one. And here are the results. You there, Julian? Yep, I'm just uh, I'm just looking at the the poll results. Okay. Um, so fifty percent went for Pomerine. Forty five percent went for Parasitic, and only five percent went for Long tailed So it was a pretty much even split here between Pomerine and Parasitic, which is what it should be. Um, this is a little bit tricky. It, it's quite it looks quite chunky in 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 the body shape the wings look broad compared to a lot of other parasitics it's got quite a big underwing flash um it is in fact a parasitic mm. and not a pomerine and if, if you look carefully at the hood we talked about the hood shape and if you look carefully you can see the little white blaze here which we talked about early on in the beginning, but if you see an adult Jaeger with a, this nice little white headlight here above the bill, you're probably looking at a parasitic. And in this case, you are. Um, you can see the hood joins the bill at the gape, and it doesn't seem to have that slight wraparound effect that, that is shown on adult palms when you see them at a distance. And again, not made easier by the fact that it doesn't have any central tail feathers. So um, for those people that, that plumbed a little bit more for Pomerine rather than parasitic, um, those are the things that um, would have been helpful to sway you the other way. Again, it's the hood shape, any prominence of, of, of a white spot here. The bill, it, it's hard to, to tell. And again, you know, when you're looking at a bicolor bill on a Pomerine, it's only useful if it's close enough to actually discern Features because at a distance um, it, it can just blend in. But again, um, this is a parasitic. Okay, thanks. All right, and here's number three. The last one. The last one. Again, sometimes it's hard on, on birds at sea to discern individual plumage details. So sometimes you have to go on size and structure and flight style, which obviously in a static image you can't. So that's sometimes why this is hard to do. It's always good to actually look at behavior and flight style when you're in the field. Um, it, mm -hmm. Again, with juveniles, we talked about an identification whereby the process is usually driven by your first impressions of size and structure because generally that's the first thing you see especially on juveniles and that can be misleading because of the size overlap and then it's only when you get to use digital cameras where you can actually sit back and and look at a, a feather by feather analysis of, of the back of the camera to kind of hone in on things that you couldn't see in the field so it can be tricky Absolutely. And, and uh, we're getting lots of answers in. Let's give everyone five, four, three, two, and one. And here are the results. Doing a great job with these polls. So 10% um, went for long-tailed. 24% went for parasitic, and the overwhelming majority uh, went for Pomerine. And those that went for Pomerine are correct. This is a Pomerine Jaeger. 
Um, hard to see um, much here in, in, the, in the ways of, of, of plumage features. Uh, and this is a, a good example of, of how you might actually see one in the field from a bolt. And for me, um, the key thing that I key into straight away for Pomerine is these broken streamers here. Even broken, we talked about the fact that um, Pomerines often, because they have such broad tail streamers, that if they snap off and they lose the spoons, the, the, the tail projection often looks still broad and blunt-ended. Um, and, and this bird's got this peculiar swallow-shaped um, cleft in its tail. But you can see the tail feathers if you extended them, would be very broad and long. And you could look at the hood. The hood does look kind of extensive on, on the lower end, but it's hard, it could be shadow. But for all intents and purposes, um, the only thing of, of value here to identify this for me um, is the tail feather shape. Um, you know, if, if, if the tail was completely missing, uh, which it not often is, I don't think I've seen many Pomerines where when the tail's broken, it's broken right at the end of the tail and is completely missing. But this would be uh, not an easy bird to identify uh, without that tail feather shape. So well done. Everybody seemed to kind of be going for one species or the other in, in these quizzes. So they're obviously keen into things. So I'm hoping that some of the things that have brought attention to is helpful. Um, Again, very tricky. Even, even adults can be tricky, depending on how well you see them. So what have we learned? Um, adult Jaegers are often more straightforward compared to juveniles. Uh, I, I don't think any, anybody would disagree with that. Um, in the field, ID is usually made up of, of that kind of first impression that we talked about. It's kind of a feel of a, a structure and it's often easy to be distracted by uh, tail feather shape when an adult Jaeger has, has, you know, undamaged central tail feathers. The, the, the thing that kind of draws our attention to pretty quickly. But as we've seen, um, between parasitic and long-tailed um, on a flying bird in the field, in the moment, it can be hard to assess whether it, it's a, a, a long-tailed parasitic or a short-tailed long-tailed. Um, so concentrating on what we talked about with the head and bill shape and the lower border to the cap and, and where it joins is, is critical in adult Jaegers. It's a good idea to get even if you see a, an adult Pomerine and it's obviously, you don't really need to put much effort into that, that identification. It's often good to just look at these birds and, and, and look at them at a distance and get a feel and a sense of, of size and shape and bill size. So that if you do see a bird that is missing central tail feathers, you won't be completely reliant on that one feature. You'll have a backup of things that, that you've found useful that you can concentrate on. And again, one of those is that little white blaze in parasitics. It's not often prominent on every bird, but if you do see a bird, uh, an adult Jaeger that has that white um, headlight there above the bill, it's a good sure sign that it's probably a parasitic. And again, just like juveniles, um, correct IDs are often based on a suite of characters as, as we show with juveniles. There's so much overlap between um, bill size and shape in some individuals and, and breast bands and no breast bands between individuals and between the sexes. That it's just a matter of knowing what features are helpful and kind of making a note of those mentally so that you can kind of check those off on the list. And hopefully that'll kind of um, narrow your choice down and, and help you identify uh, the bird based on, um, you know, the sum of its parts instead of just concentrating on one feature. And that's it. Um, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Um, I know last week's went a little bit long, so I've tried to keep this from, um, you know, people falling asleep in the chair or Andy getting his second drink, you know, 
<laughs> like, no, that was wonderful. Thank you mm -hmm. very much. Thank you so much. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna stop sharing my screen now, so you can take over. Okay. Let's see if you have questions, well, please put them in the Q and A. Yeah. Yes, please put them in the Q and A. That kind of help. That ha does help us keep track of everything that comes through and make sure we answer everything. Um, however, I, however, I, I, some uh, the panelists can't put uh, questions in the Q A Q and A. Mark. So the panelists yeah. cannot put. Oh, okay. But Andy I'm, has uh, Andy has one in the chat. Right. Yeah. Andy, <laughs> so. You. So Andy asked me if the dark on the cap of a Pomeranian that extends under the, the gape, like under the chin, is pretty diagnostic. Um, I would say it's pretty diagnostic, Andy. Um, some parasitics can have a little bit more um, color there, but it, if, if it obviously extends into the malar region like that and kind of has a bitewood facing spur, um, it, it's, it's a pretty good indicator. I always kind of look for that. It's kind of what I, I mean, obviously it typically has a big bill, but I always check the hood and more often than not, it, it's, it's pretty, pretty diagnostic. Parasitics tend to have, um, you know, much of a, a slightly gray and more diffuse cap, um, especially on the lower border. And whereas Pomerites tend to have a, a very well-marked cap that extends there. So it's, it's, I, I do feel that it's, pretty diagnostic. Could you get some parasitics that kind of hint at that? I, I'm sure you can, but I think they're pretty few and far between if you get a good look at them. Great, thanks. Wonderful. So Lily has a question. She asks, are, are dark morphs just adults? So as we talked about in, in juveniles, juveniles also come in uh, multiple flavors. Mm -hmm. uh, vanilla and chocolate and, and a mixture in between so in the juveniles you get dark morph juveniles um, light morph juveniles and intermediates and in the adults um, you get dark morph adults so uh, they're not always adults if you do see them in, in dark morphs but obviously it, that goes into time of year and the, the problem with identifying the dark morphs or aging them is on the juveniles, we talked about uh, the underwings being very, very well barred and mottled as a, as a sign of a bird being a juvenile or a one-year-old, whereas adults are quite uniform and dark. But the problem with some of the dark morph juveniles is because the feathers are so dark, it's hard to see all that mottling and they don't show them a lot of the time. Some of the auxiliaries might have them, so some dark morph adults and some dark morph juveniles um, can be very, very similar. Mm -hmm. yeah, thank you. Uh, Andy, you can go ahead and ask yeah, the ask question. <laughs> Next one's 20 bucks, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to keep you up as late as possible. I know it's- Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. Just, just, just one more, I'm curious. It's all right, my, my, my kid's sleeping in the hallway. So, um, <laughs> so I'm, one more I'm, I'm curious about, which is, um, you know, because I, I, I sometimes wonder if I feel like I can see it on, on some of the younger birds, but I, I may be just imagining it. But in that adult plumage in long tail where, you, you know, you talk about obviously that contrast between the upper parts and the second, you know, the, the wing coverts and the secondaries, you know, can any of that <laughs> apply to younger ages as well? Or is that really only on, on adult long tails? <laughs> No, so it, it it does it does mirror that contrast is mirrored in some younger birds. So as we talked about last week, if, if you're out on a pelagic in August, um, where you're getting juveniles coming through, you can get one year olds still that, that you know that were born the previous year, and the one year olds tend to develop a lot more of an adult-like plumage, like we talked about last week. Like the juveniles typically tend to be often pretty much dark, not very contrasty. But by the time they get to one year old, um, these one-year-olds with the very pin-shaped central tail feathers that are very worn, 
they've also developed an, an adult-like calf and a bit of a breastband. So those one-year-olds do mirror the upper wing contrast that you see in the adults. Mm. So it is worth looking for on one-year-olds. Uh, and I have seen that, but because they tend to be a little bit browner, the contrast is there, but sometimes, like you said, am I seeing it or am I not? And, and it can be really hard sometimes. It's obviously very uh, striking on the adults, um, but if, if you key into that, um, that subtle difference in young birds is, is apparent too that can kind of help you put another check in the plus column for long-tailed. Right. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Great, thanks. Anything else from anyone? I don't see anything popping in. Julian, thank you very much for another wonderful webinar. No problem. Thank you very much for having me back, if, if that was a choice. <laughs> I was coming <laughs> no, back great. anyway. No, um, thank you so much. Yeah, um, no, I'm glad. Thank you. It's been, been great to meet everybody. I hope everybody that tuned in, um, like I said last week, uh, took something away from this because that's the key thing is to hopefully present a very complex, difficult identification um, in a simple way as possible where people can go away and, and read at their heart's content about tertials and auxiliaries. But if, if I've given you a broad kind of sense of what the problems are, what the solutions may be, and kind of a couple of key features to key into, um, and then hopefully that'll help you out in the field and kind of make you a better birder. But again, Jaegers are not easy by any means. So um, I used to think that I, I could identify them a little bit more confidently than I realized <laughs> I can because with digital photography, now, as I said, you know, before we had digital cameras, the bird kept going and you can call it whatever you want as long as it didn't come back. <laughs> uh, everybody's, gonna, everybody's like, uh, no, sorry. <laughs> so it's, it's been humbling, but it's been a learning experience for a lot of, of, of what people would call experienced birders. So yeah. it's a lot of eating humble pie after the, for dessert, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you app, would you absolutely. recommend? Would you recommend book wise? You know, for people, I often get this question: is like Olson, Larson, Harrison, Seabirds, that sort of. Um, I've not read Harrison Seabirds. I think um, Olson and Larson is the go-to treatise on, on the subject but if you do a lot of browsing online you, you'll find there's a lot of um, birders that have, have found Jaegers difficult in the field and you'll find there's a lot of um, what I find helpful is the birds that have thrown up problems you know a, an adult long-tailed Jaeger with tail streamers like this long mm -hmm. not a problem not going to learn much from those it, it, it's the ones where you'll find people struggle with a particular bird and there's been a lot on bird forum. Um, I, I remember there was um, a bird in Utah years ago and, and this wasn't distant. This was like frame filling photographs mm -hmm. and people were split between parasitic and long tailed and it was a palm. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, and, and then, so, so then you're like, Oh, well, I, what am I doing? You know, why, why, why are we getting this wrong? Why are we, or why are we getting it right? And it's been good because those are the birds where you get other people who, who know more about Jaegers than I do um, contributing to those. So I find it's those difficult birds that you learn the most from. And as Andy will, will know from birding in the UK, um, you know, we chase a lot of rarities. And it's often the vagrants that you learn the most about a species because it, it forces you to actually look at a bird for a considerable amount of time. And that's when you realize, you know, oh yeah, I, I didn't, I didn't, I never looked at that because they were common. And when you're forced to look at them and figure out how to separate it from something rare from Asia or America, um, you realize you're not looking at your common birds that, that much or that intently. So it's just, it's just about, I think the, you learn more from the problem birds than you do from the, sure. the easy ones. So definitely, definitely. Well, again, thank you very much. Right. We really, really appreciate it. And we actually will let you get to sleep 
uh, before midnight tonight, so that's good. Oh, look at that. Yeah. <laughs> Day off. All right. Hey, great to see everybody. And again, for everybody tuning in, uh, I appreciate it and all the best. And um, to uh, remind everyone, uh, next month on the 14th, we have um, a great pr a webinar coming up on, um, on what do we have coming up? <laughs> it's on the uh, international banding stations and use of data and understanding migration, climate change, and that sort of thing, run by yeah. Steve Alpert from the um, Institute for Bird Populations. Fantastic. On this second Tuesday of the month, um, Andy has been doing a wonderful job of setting up pelagic trips. We just had a wonderful pelagic trip on Saturday. Uh, um, and so uh, the next pelagic trip uh, will be coming up uh, soon, I guess. Um, but it'll give us a chance to try out our new Jaeger skills and knowledge. So stay tuned for that. Unfortunately, uh, they've been filling, or fortunately, they've been filling up um, by just Los Angeles Birders members. We haven't had a chance to open them up for the general public. So my recommendation, of course, is to become a member of Los Angeles Birders so that you get notice of upcoming pelagics and other trips. Anything else, Mark? No, I think that's great. Um, Sounds and, great. And good night, everybody. In that good night, case, everybody. good night, everyone. We'll well, thanks for joining us. We'll Bye. see you out in the field. Take care.